Yes, hello. My name is Bjorn Hansen. I'm the Executive Director of the European Chemicals Agency. I'd like to welcome you to this Safer Chemicals Conference online. My talk is about delivering on safer chemicals. But before going into that, let me say a few words about our online event here, and in particular about the challenges that we're all facing in these COVID-19 challenging uh, times. As you can see, I've not managed to find a hairdresser who could cut my hair with two meters distance, but I hope that that's not going to distract you from what I have to say. So many times welcome to this online event. Please give us feedback on how it goes and what we can do better next time, because I'm sure that this won't be the last time that we will engage in this type of event. What I'll be talking about today is I'll look a bit at which chemicals we have in the, U in the EU today. I'll then go and look at which chemicals do, does the EU need tomorrow, and then explain a little bit how we at the European Chemicals Agency see that we can help deliver on that promise and need for which chemicals uh, need to be here in Europe uh, in the future. To start out with, we have the European Commission's, and in, in particular, President von der Leyen's uh, Green Deal, which frames very much the future of how Europe and its growth strategy should look like. So it's an all-encompassing framing of where Europe and our industry and our growth should be going over the next 30, 40, 50 years. It sets the clear objective of getting to climate neutrality in 2050, but it also sets a large number of other objectives that are intertwined and also prerequisites for achieving the climate neutrality. Here are a number of the various policy documents that we've seen the Commission produce and which we here in the Chemicals Agency have been reading with great intensity in order to get an idea of what would be expected from us at this agency in order to help the union deliver on the policy demands that are outlined in these various papers. I start with the Green Deal, which is the umbrella uh, document, which mentions the need for circular economy. It, it explains the need for a new industrial strategy. If you go into the industrial strategy paper, you'll see that what the union is pushing for is a deep reform of our industry simultaneously with a deep and aggressive digital agenda as being the two legs on which our new industry uh, uh, will be standing. There is a plastic strategy which is all about how to use and recycle plastics more responsibly. We have a Europe beating cancer plan which is about addressing and trying to reduce the cancer in Europe. We have a zero pollution action plan, which aims at eliminating pollution. Finally, there are a sustainable products policy and a chemical strategy, which is still to be, uh, be um, uh, produced by the European Commission. And all of these strategies have a chemicals element. If I start with Green Deal and, and the zero and the, the climate neutrality for 2050, then clearly the energy that is produced or the energy that uh, chemicals industry uses has its fundament in the energy that it takes to manufacture or produce a chemical through its chemical reaction. And therefore, the less energy that we can, that a chemical reaction uses, the less energy the industry needs. And why is that so important for chemical industry? Well, chemical industry is the second highest energy consuming industry in Europe. And hence, saving on energy use in chemicals industry by getting lower energy reactions will help Europe meet the climate neutrality goal of 2050. Circular economy is all about chemicals because circularity is in its physical form all about materials and making sure that materials can be re recycled and reused. Well, the, the conditionality on whether a material can be recycled or not lays in the chemistry and in the chemicals that go in. So circular economy, the Green Deal, 
both put new dimensions or new conditionalities on the chemicals that we want in the future to ensure circularity, to ensure lower, more efficient chemical reactions. Industry strategy is, has a big in, uh, chemicals component. On the one hand, the industry needs to transform, as already mentioned in terms of uh, chemical reactions, but also becoming more efficient in the processes altogether. On the other hand, there's also the digital agenda, which is a driver of the indust new industrial revolution uh, that we want in Europe. And that digital agenda has, has, for example, to do with access to data on chemicals so that we can generate within Europe a whole economy which is all about using chemical data that we have in order to make better chemicals for the future. And then clearly, the cancer plan is about reducing exposure and substituting car to carcinogen, reducing exposure to carcinogens and substituting carcinogens altogether. And then there's the chemical strategy, which uh, Kistutis has spoken about and which uh, clearly will be framing the policy demands uh, on safety of chemicals as well. Now, if we look at the chemicals we have today, then that's clearly the bread and butter of the European Chemicals Agency today. What we've been doing the last couple of years is trying to sort through the chemical universe. What that basically means is that we want to have looked at every single chemical that has been registered in the European Union by 2027. And by the end of this year, all chemicals which have been registered at 100 tons and up. And this means that by 2027, we want to have looked at all over 21,000 chemicals. And by 2020, the 2,400 high volume chemicals. And put them into various categories of uh, concern. So those substances which already have been risk managed, those substances for which risk management currently is undergoing, those substances for which more data is being generated, and then those substances for which we propose no further action at the moment. We are still working through this, and the results will be finished by the end of the year for the high volume chemicals. Then we'll take the learnings from that and move on to the lower volume chemicals with completing a mapping of the chemical universe into these categories by the end of 2027. If we look forward and look at which chemicals the EU needs tomorrow, and we in the European Chemicals Agency are trying to see what policy demands are on chemicals from those policy documents that I outlined before, and what we read into them is clearly that we need to achieve a more sustainable society, and what that requires is a significant change in both the way we produce chemicals and the chemicals we are actually producing themselves need to be changed sub substantially, as well as how we use and reuse them. In particular, the fact that absolutely everything we have in our offices, in our homes, in our car, or that we buy in the shops is made out of chemicals, tells us that chemicals is absolutely fundamental, or chemicals policy and chemicals innovation is absolutely fundamental in order to make our society sustainable. And what we read into all these policy papers is that there are three conditionalities that will be put on products and hence also on the chemicals themselves for the future. And that is first of all to be safe, but the concept of safety, at least that we leave it, read into a number of the papers, for example, the zero pollution agenda, is more stringent and more ambitious than what it means to be safe under the current legislation. There is a conditionality that the materials need to be circular, which again means that the chemicals that make up the material, which is nothing else than a mixture of chemicals, must be circular. And finally, there is the need to move away from high energy to lower energy chemical reactions or further optimization of the existing reactions that, it, that are there in order to reduce energy consumption all in all. And that, those are the three conditionalities that we see policy putting on chemicals. And 
this clearly needs significant innovation. And we are talking quite a long time with a lot of inv innovation investment in order to move from the chemicals we produce today to the chemicals that are needed tomorrow. In order to do that in a way that provides predictability for investment in innovation, we need, of course, to be able to define what is actually a sustainable chemical and keep that definition stable so that investments can be made to reach chemicals of that nature over the next decades. And there we think in the European Chemicals Agency that we, together with our sister agencies, for example, the European Food Safety Agency and the European Medicines Agency, can work in each our area in order to map out what are the technical and scientific conditionalities that need to be met in order to ensure safety, circularity, and less energy. If we have such a definition and we know what are the chemicals we have on the market today, then of course we need quite a number of actions in order to bridge the gap from where we want to be and where we are today. And there again, looking into the policy documents the Commission has produced and looking at where we think we can play a role, then we have some actions that we are already undertaking today and we have some actions that we think we could undertake tomorrow in order to support these policies. The one central action that we're implementing today is to look at groups of substances. Always look at a group of chemicals rather than a sing singular, single chemical. And the reason for that is that you actually understand much better even the single chemical if you're seeing it relative to all a lot of chemicals that are similar in chemistry as the one you're looking at. On top of that, you can much more efficiently extrapolate, so get a much better understanding much quicker for many more chemicals by looking at groups. This is something we've mainstreamed in all our work already in the Chemicals Agency, and I expect already over the next couple of years that the results of this you will be, see, be able to see. We're also speeding up, which we think is a very, a very important component of bridging the gap, is that we must speed up the work that we're doing today. You see that in a number of the policy messages uh, that have come from the, com the, the Commission, but we also put it on us in terms of our mission to protect the citizen, to ensure safety, that speeding up is an essential element of that. And this is speeding up generating safety data in line with the compliance check uh, action plan that we have set up with the Commission jointly. It is to use the data that we get from doing more compliance checks to identify chemicals of concern in order then to go and manage them and to do this all quicker than we've been doing up until now. Here, also the grouping pro approach is one that we expect will help us speed up on top of other actions to speed up. In looking forward and moving from the chemicals we have today in order to get the chemicals that we need tomorrow, we see also that we as a European Chemicals Agency can contribute to achieving that, uh, uh, the goal of getting to more sustainable chemicals. One of the actions is clearly to collaborate better with our sister agencies in order to gain efficiencies and accelerate the speed of getting to risk management. We also see of doing this under the umbrella of a concept that we've read and see in the Commission's policy documents, but we're also seeing it in, in the Parliament resolution of one substance, one assessment. So basically combining all the efforts that currently are done separately under separate in instruments, separate legal frameworks, at different times with different bases, uh, databases, and different uh, people involved to get all that all together in a more efficient, holistic assessment. We also think that sharing of IT tools for much more harmonized data uh, entry, distribution, exchange, but also access, in particular within the digital agenda, is a crucial element in bridging the gap from where we are today to where we want to be tomorrow. We must have knowledge in order to stimulate the innovation that is needed to change the chemistry and change the chemicals we manufacture. And there, I think that we in the Chemicals Agency 
have tools, knowledge, and uh, competence to be able to push that digital agenda, agenda on chemicals data. And finally, to consider expanding the platform that we already have on chemical hazard data to include a lot more information regarding chemicals in a whole EU chemical safety data platform, which is freely accessible to researchers, to industry, and to regulators in order to promote the usage of data and thereby create a whole market on the use of all this data. In line with uh, the object uh, objectives of the uh, digital agenda. We believe that under this umbrella of one substance, one assessment, we as a chemicals agency could also help serve better the EU in a more efficient and consistent manner by looking at a number of pieces of legislation which regulate and assess the same chemicals as we look at under REACH or and CLP. And therefore, by looking more broadly at the chemicals legislation and then deciding which point pieces of legislation could an uh, agency like ours serve in order to increase efficiencies or an agency like the Food Safety Agency or our sister agency in Amsterdam, the Medicines Agency. Here are a number of pieces of legislation that we have started serving over the last couple of years. Uh, we've, we will be starting actively or uh, serving under the Drinking Water Directive. We are working on persistent organic pollutants. We've looked at substances of concern in products from the waste legislation. We've started to coordinate um, the, the EU formatting for servicing information for the poison centers. We're working on developing the science basis for occupational exposure limit values. We've developed a so-called EU chemicals legislation finder, which enables people to look at what legislation in the EU covers any specific chemical. And we think there's a lot more to come that we can look into, that we can support or even actively do in order to get the one substance, one assessment concept filled with real life and do it in an efficient and consistent manner. Ultimately, in getting this innovation, those are some of the actions, but there are two bigger forces in innovation. There's a push and there's a pull factor. The pull factor being the true driver of innovation, namely getting transparency to data and triggering a demand for sustainability. So the many companies who are forward-looking, forward-thinking, and want to be at the edge of innovation, will be able, we will be able to help by, for example, giving them access to the data, to the information, and the knowledge that we have here in the chemicals agency, but also the science community, and much broader than that. But that alone does not enable us to move quickly to, from the chemicals we have today to those we need tomorrow. That is the pull effect, but we need a push effect, which means that the laggards, those who are not at the forefront or actually have a business model not to be at the forefront, are still pushed along uh, the development towards sustainable chemicals. And the best instrument to frame that push effect is consistent and efficient regulation. And there again, on both those fronts, I think that the European Chemicals Agency can help the EU policy in moving chemicals industry from being the industry it is today, serving the European citizen and serving the European economy to a sustainable industry tomorrow, equally serving the European citizen and serving the European economy. So with that, I'll finish my talk for now, and I hope that we'll be able to see each other next year, where we've already fixed the date for this conference on the 29th of April, 2021. I hope that we all can look forward over this year and take the messages from this conference and the learnings from this conference and make the next year the first year in working towards a sustainable uh, Europe in the chemicals area, our first big step big leap towards the 2050 aim of achieving a climate neutral uh, Europe. 
So with that, I wish you all much pleasure with today's conference, and I hope very much to see you again next year.